Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new F123 tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to get better rotation out of your Formula 1 car in the F123 game. AKA, go faster around the corners as that's what we all are striving to do at least at least that's what i'm striving to do so i'm going to be breaking it down into some simple driving techniques for you to understand at home and then delving into the setup after and how you can tweak the setup such as wings anti-roll bar to help get you a little bit more rotation and bite of front grip into the apexes so with that being said the first thing i'm going to be touching upon in this video is your steering angle applying too much steering lock like i am doing right now will simply cause the front tyres to not have enough grip to deal with the demand that you're putting upon them. In racing, there is always a grip threshold that you have to drive to. does not matter if you're driving a road car or a Formula 1 car. There's always a certain grip limit that the tyres can provide, so you just have to do your best of driving to that limit and feeding them the ability to generate grip, and that's how you can get around the corner as fast as possible. So when you start applying too much steering lock, quite simply, I'm asking too much of the front tyres, and they are not able to generate that grip to deal with my demand. The only way I can go through the corner without generating understeer with the steering lock is simply just to go slower. I will not be able to go faster and get more grip. That's just not how the tyre will be working in Formula 1. And in road cars as well, that is. So, what happens if we apply too little steering lock? You can see, basically, the same effect happens, but in a way that is a gradual understeer around the corner and they're just generally not having enough steering lock and grip to go around the apex not so much sliding the tire but just simply being slow to be honest you can see here not enough steering lock and the car is just just washing out it's a it's just slow um that's the best way i could describe it so i'm going to be teaching you the fundamentals now and how to understand if you have the correct steering lock too much too little and I'm going to be starting this off by saying if you have a 4 seat back racing wheel, especially like a direct drive, I have a Fanatec DD1 here in my hands right now. And generally with 4 seat back racing wheels, when the wheel is getting heavier and heavier, that is signaling, signaling grip that you're going to be having for your car at your disposal. If you are having your wheel suddenly get lighter, that is signaling that, that you have overstepped the grip limit, whether that be understeer and or oversteer. In this case, it would be understeer if the wheel suddenly got lighter. And once you have regained the front grip of the car, then you can have the fact that the wheel will go heavier again and signaling that you have the ability to rotate the car nicely again. So if you're on the pad, for my best knowledge that I have, I don't drive on the pad that much, so I don't know this as a matter of fact, but for the friends and the people I do know drive on the pad, have said that the pad will start rumbling when the when the grip is lost. So if you're going through a corner and the pad is rumbling, that is a good indication that you are over the grip limit of the car and you need to bring it back by 2-3% and that will give you the ability to rotate the car nicely. So with that being said, understanding the right steering angle is really fundamental and really key. Once you understand the force back of the wheel that is going heavier and lighter at certain times, that will tell you if you have the right steering lock in the car. Another quite simple way to understand is just visually. If you can see that the car is on a good trajectory around the corner in a very stable way, hitting your clicking point and coming to the exit of the corner, that is generally a good indication that you have the right steering angle to go around the apexes with, and then you can start building up speed from there. Remember not to be sudden with your inputs as that will generate understeer. Even if you are starting to reach the correct steering angle, if you do it too fast, you will just overstep the grip limit of the car and the entry to the corner will just be filled with understeer and unpredictability of the front grip. So now we have covered the steering angle and basically now we'll be stepping on to the brake bias. If you have your brake bias just set too far forward it will mean that the front tires are going to be overloaded with the potential as i indicated earlier the tires only have a certain amount of grip and you have to drive within that grip limit as well so if we have 70 percent on the front bias you can see we go down to the corner and we don't even lock up but simply we have overloaded the front grip of the car and we are not able to use any of that force for turning so you can see we don't even really lock up we're just very much on the limit of the front grip, but because we have used so much of the front grip for the braking capability of the car, we have not left any of the, cap the 
the grip capability of the car left for the turning phase of the corner. So what we're going to do now is put the brake bias down to 56%. I recommend 56, 55 within the F1 23 game. And then now this will allow us to rotate into the corner nicely and get out of the corner in a very nice fashion. If you want to add more rotation into the car you can go lower on the brake bias and put it more towards the rear and you can see going down to 55 this time this will allow us a little bit more rotation into the apex and that will be nicely and very sweetly done so as i indicated there what is happening with the car is fundamentally when you're having the front brake bias even if you don't lock up the front tires you are either using the front grip or the tire grip in general to brake or turn or accelerate if you have too much of the force of the tyres dedicated to the braking zone of the track or the corner in this instance, you will not have enough of that tyre force left in reserve for when you actually want to be turning the car. So think about that. If you are understeering past the apex of the corner, you might just be having the front brake bias too far forward and that might just be stopping you from having enough grip in reserve to rotate and get the car around the apex of the corner. So the final part of my, well, initial part of my uh, description of driving technique is simply just braking too late. If you brake too late, you're just going to be missing the apex. And that is such an obvious statement, I know, but it's something I have to touch upon in this video. As some people are still learning, developing, and this is where I want to focus this video to audience towards the people learning and developing themselves and how they can get better at the F1 game, starting from everyone, because I was terrible at the F1 game. And I really was really having to learn so hard in my early phases of the game back in F1 2010, 2011, 2012. And eventually, after many, many years and many, many hours grinding, I got okay at the game i got pretty good but i understand that these fundamentals are not always easy for everyone to pick up straight away so i want to give this video a gravitas to everyone that can be watching this and learning as well so you can see now in the braking phase my second example i braked a bit earlier and was able to get to the apex more efficiently something that is a really good technique to have mentally is when you miss your braking zone hypothetically let's say we missed a corner by you can see barely nothing so we're going to do another example and miss the corner by more of extreme example this time and you can see we're going to miss the corner by a few meters what quite a lot of people do in this situation in this example when they miss the corner by a few meters they panic and start breaking way too early and they have no speed going into the corner so if you miss the corner by a massive distance, and what I'm going to do again is show you another example of missing the corner by a massive distance. Let's say you break at the 50 meter board and you can barely get the car slow for the apex. What the best thing to do now is, is, okay, in your mind, say the 50 meter board was not good. So understand that I missed a corner by 30 centimeters in this example. So instead of bringing it back and panicking and bringing it all the way back to the 100 meter board, Think in your mind, how much did I miss the corner by? In this example, it's about 30 centimetres. So in that example, 30 centimetres of missing the apex can maybe correlate to breaking one metre earlier. And you can get more and more finite detail and maybe make it exact ratios. In my racing exactly right now, if I missed a corner by 30 centimetres, it's easy for my brain to easily detect and deploy next lap that, okay, I'm going to break 30 centimetres early. While you're still in your early development phases and learning a lot about braking and getting the fundamentals completely correct, maybe for every meter or half a meter or every centimeter that you miss your apex, double it and then move your braking zone back by that number. For example, we missed it by 30 centimeters, so we're going to move the braking back by about one meter, what would be... Instead of braking when we get to the line or the 50 meter board, would be about here so we're going to do our best to hit that marker board and use it as our reference point so break it down you can see we pretty much got that nailed on the braking spot actually for what we predicted for where we need to break and that allowed us to get to the corner nicely you can see pretty much bang on to be honest we 
we broke where we was actually aiming to and that allowed me to get to the corner nicely simply because i did this ratio in my mind of saying i missed the corner by x amount i'm going to break x amount early and this will allow you to carry better speed and rotation through the corner versus breaking too early or too late Again, do not panic if you miss the apex. It is simply something to fix the next lap. And by panicking, will stop you having the ability to fix it for the laps following as well. Think about methodical and methods that will give you outcomes that you can predict. Most of driving a car fast is about predicting the outcome that can happen around the corner. So if you're able to brake slightly earlier and do a calculation in your mind for next lap about where you should brake and what the outcome should be, this will give you a good reservoir in your mind of knowledge and information that you can deploy on the following laps. So with that being said, I'm going to be talking about the setup and going over some basic details that can help you get better rotation as well. In the high speed, better rotation can come from the front wing angle. Upping it by one, two clicks can give you better better rotation using the off roller differential if you're having drastic understeer in the middle of the corner lowering that off roller differential will give you better rotation in the middle phase of the apex especially and allow you to straighten up the car and get back on the power sooner if you're looking for better rotation throughout the medium and low speed corners lowering that front suspension stiffness will basically help the front tires bite into the tarmac a bit better and give you that rotation as a result if you're looking for better turning, you can also up the front anti-roll bar to a certain degree and that will give you better rotation as well. Again, I said certain degree because if you go all the way up on 20, 1 is the maximum in this game, you might have better initial turn in for the first 2 meters of the for the track or the turn in phase, but then you'll run out of travel on the anti-roll bar and the car will simply become too stiff and will have the inability to load up the outside tires with the grip necessary to go around the corner. So that being said, if you are having inability to get the car into the apex going into the corners, simply upping it by one or two will help you get the car sharper into the apex. This normally will come at a downside that the middle and the exit phase of the corner will be hindered because every single time you go up on the front anti-roll bar, think of it this way, you will increase the ability to rotate the car in the initial entry phase of the corner, but you will start to hinder the middle and exit phase of the corner as well well so be careful that you do not go too far on the front anti-roll bar and start hindering the later phase of the corner but if you can go up on the front anti-roll bar and not have mid corner to exit corner understeer it will be beneficial for your lap time Touching upon the final point of this video will be the front brake bias. Again, as I talked about on track, lowering that front brake bias will give you better ability to rotate the car around the apex and overall keep the front load uh, more even distributed and not just solely using the front grip for braking and allowing that grip reservoir to be deployed equally around the corner to get optimal lap time position and lap time as well. So I know I have been a little bit inactive on YouTube and social media over these last few weeks. To be honest, I was focusing on myself. I had some injuries in my legs and my thighs especially that I had to fix. So I spent basically all of my time stretching and getting back into a place that my body can be 100% efficient. Now I feel good. I feel in a really strong place. I'm out running again and I feel in a, in a really good place about all of that. So I can start making YouTube videos again. Expect the next video to be around Friday, Saturday, Day as I'm going to be co-hosting a sim racing part of an exhibition at the London XL this week actually so my train is leaving in about three hours um, so I'm going to edit this video real quick for you and get it uploaded but I wanted to come back to YouTube I wanted to upload this video for you to be helping and learning as much as possible so this has been a beginner guide and again as I said in my previous videos I will be doing more elaborate and detailed examples going forward in future videos but this video today is all about beginning and understanding the fundamentals of rotating around the corner so that being said i've been brendan lee thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video glad to was actually ciao ciao bye bye